And another thing, you are going to be wrong if you say it. Hey, weren't you like really wanting Colette Decides to Die to get licensed? Old news, but yeah, finally, am I right? It's not like I haven't been rallying for that series to come out in English for like the last five years or anything. Oh, and Pigtail Habanero as well, right? Yeah, I mention it from time to time. It's a Margaret banger after all. And you know, Tales of the Tendo Family, you were talking about that one a lot and it just came out in English. Are you going somewhere with this? No, not really. I just think you might have a unique superpower of manifestation where you can split thoughts into the minds of others as if it was their own idea, leading them to license the exact Shoujo and Josie series that you desire. But it comes at the cost of you sometimes supplanting thoughts into people that you don't mean to, causing a ripple effect which crushes your mental stability, taking you down the path of the movie Hancock where you turn to alternatives to cope with your overwhelming power after being shunned by society. It's less about me having superpowers and more about me having a decently successful YouTube channel. Same thing, really. Oh, wait! Weren't you gonna film today? I'm going too soon. I'm in the middle of winning this Twitter argument about which boy from the Challengers movie would be Tai Chi. Oh, that's easy. Patrick. Patrick. This is the first time we've agreed on something. I don't like it. I'm gonna go film that video. Hello, my hojos. And might I just say, I have been on an absolute roll lately. The A Condition Called Love anime is airing right now. Some of my favorite manga are getting licensed. And Ikoku Nikki just got announced for an anime adaptation. This year is no longer the year of the dragon. It's the year of the hojo. Someone add that character into Fruits Basket immediately. <laughs> Hojo. With this surprising streak of good luck, as even though I am Irish, I have never had this kind of luck before, I wanted to hopefully continue that by talking about six obscure shoujo and jose manga that I would love to see come to an English-speaking audience. Titles that most of you have never even heard of, and especially if you don't scroll on any list for hours like I do. From body swaps, to witches, to lesbians, these series are so underground that I've started to listen to Vampire Weekend again and I punched out the lenses of my 3D glasses. Which is why I need to use my powers once again to bring these lesser known interesting titles to the forefront of your attention. There is no point in keeping them to myself if it means I don't even get to read them if I do. So strap in, grab a notebook, and write down these amazing titles so you can put them in the next Seven Seas licensing survey. Let's kick this off with a manga that has been running in the shoujo magazine Asuka since 2019 called Mr. Malo Blue by Akaza Samamiya. To the perceptive viewers out there, you may already recognize this author's name or artwork. We've actually gotten a work by Samamiya before called Bloody Mary from Shoujo Beat almost 10 years ago now, which obviously means we're due for a new one by them. Mr. Malo Blue is a really unique drama series that's even furthered by its atmospheric artwork. The series follows two people, Sakura and Aoi, who are both sick of their lives and wish they no longer had to be around. However, right before Aoi is about to die, the two of them swap bodies with each other. Aoi becomes the high school girl Sakura while she becomes the 20-something year old shut-in Aoi, complicating their already extremely complicating lives. After this switch up, Aoi ends up befriending Sakura's classmate Minazuki, who has quite a bit of problems of his own. Thanks to those problems though, Minazuki readily believes Aoi when he tells him immediately that he's actually an older man who has swapped bodies with a high schooler. The two of them then team up to track down Sakura, who has her own plans with Aoi's body, which mainly entails exacting revenge on her current high school bully and former best friend. There is so much going on with this manga. It layers themes of bullying, queerness, and mystery all on top of each other to get this really somber tone. Only bolstered further by the dingy settings, 
which is contrasted with the bubbly, sparkly shoujo atmosphere to it. Mr. Mala Blue is probably one of the most vibey shoujo works out right now for that reason alone. No character action feels out of place, and especially as you get to know them more when the story unfolds. Their own hardships in life outline the course of their actions throughout the entire series perfectly. One of the best parts is seeing Sakura's vendetta against her current bully because that relationship is so complicated in itself. People complain about toxic Yuri all the time, but they haven't met Sakura and Yume yet. The series is incredibly well written as well as having beautiful artwork with an engaging story that ties it all together. For all of these reasons, I would love to see Mr. Mala Blue come out in English. Its moodiness and drama will get anyone hooked right from chapter one. And you know, it already has some fans built in because the author has been in English already. This is just an incredible story that I highly recommend and think more people need to check out. Next up might be another familiar name to the discerning eye. We have Champignon Witch by Tachibana Higuchi. Champignon, 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 champignon. <laughs> A magical fantasy manga that is currently publishing in Hakusensha's web app called Manga Park by the mangaka of Gakuen Alice. For those who have read that shoujo classic, you know that you are in for a treat since this new series also has powers, creatures, and lovable characters. Champignon Witch is centered on an isolated witch named Luna who lives in the black forest in her mushroom home. Luna would love to be around other people, but the only problem is that the townspeople believe they'll die if they go anywhere near her because poisonous mushrooms are conjured wherever she walks. To a degree, they are right, but that doesn't make their jeers whenever she's around or discomfort any less hurtful. Despite her reputation though, Luna is an incredibly good witch. She sells the medicine she concocts to the people in town and is always looking for new cures for them. One day, Luna's isolated life suddenly changes when she finds a young boy floating down the river with a knife in his chest. While she's able to remove this knife, it turns out that a cursed mushroom is also attached to it. And the boy just so happens to be a powerful witch's son that is said to bring ruin to the world. However, Luna has already become attached to him and vows that she will be his mentor to prevent any disaster from happening. If you love world building in a fantasy setting, then you are going to love Champignon Witch. The series already has a very fairy tale, storybook esque quality to it, which makes the lore surrounding the world that much more whimsical. Also, that much darker. As the story unravels, you see more and more why this society of witches may not be as charming as you once thought only a few chapters before. Many of the details in this series actually come from the extras at the end of each chapter. Higuchi gives us outlined images of Luna's daily outfits, her mushroom home, the names of her mushrooms that sprout from her powers, and many more. Some people may like that show-don't-tell method, but in this case, it really just goes to show how much thought Higuchi put into this manga. No stone is left unturned in exploring the world that Luna lives in. Champignon Witch would be an absolute treat to have in English. There's already a current popularity with witches because of Witch Hat Atelier, and it would be a great time to capitalize off of that. Not to mention, Shoujo fans already want Gaku and Alice to get relicensed in the first place because we never got the entire series. So a win is a win is a win in my book. This would just be the perfect series to have on anyone's shelves and the whimsical storybook nature would charm anyone. Completely unrelated, I have two different K-pop songs stuck in my head and it's for two completely different reasons. I have the House Sweet by New Jean stuck in my head because I keep going. And then I also have Supernova by Espa stuck in my head, and it's just the... The next series we're gonna talk about is one that I've actually mentioned on the channel before, but I'm absolutely blanking on when I mentioned it. The Seven Nights of Moroni or Kingdom by Nao Iwamoto is another series that has already had an author published in English before. This title is a much more recent one though, because Iwamoto's Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom was just recently published last year by Seven Seas. Which means if you think that this series is good, 
you go pick up that one and we might get it. Like her previous manga, The Seven Knights of Moroni or Kingdom is another fantasy work. This time there's a much more expanded world though, plus magic, supervillains, and fight scenes. It's a much more elevated version of Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom, considering the fact that it's not just eight chapters long. In fact, it's been ongoing since 2016 in the Jose magazine Flowers, and currently has eight volumes out. The manga is set in the landlocked kingdom of Maranir, which is surrounded by seven other sovereign states. As the seven sons of General Baribara, they must each travel to the different kingdoms as ambassadors of their own. The ultimate goal is to show that Maranir is friendly with the rest of them and promoting diplomacy between them. However, things don't go exactly as planned when the oldest son, Nemukunai, goes to visit the Everlasting Night Kingdom. Once there, the people of Everlasting Night seem to have alternative reasons as to why the Knights of Moronir Kingdom are there, and their shady actions are constantly keeping Nemu Kunai in the dark figuratively and literally. This synopsis really only scrapes the surface of this manga, but it gets the point across nonetheless. The series is really just a quintessential Iwamoto title with the respect between characters and the engaging political intrigue. It starts off as a seemingly straightforward European-esque night series, but once you leave Moroni or Kingdom in the first couple of chapters, it becomes apparent that the story isn't going to be as straightforward as you thought it was going to be. I could gush about Iwamoto's work for an entire video, but I will spare you this time around because we got a couple more manga to get into. As a fan of her work though, The Seven Knights of Moroni or Kingdom is a series I would absolutely love to read in full someday. I hope that Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom did well enough that maybe someone out there might consider licensing this one. This. And if someone does license the series, you know where you could buy it? At today's sponsor, Walt's Comic Shop. Looking for English language manga in the EU? Then you need to check out Walt's Comic Shop. Waltz has thousands of manga currently in stock with an inventory that is growing daily. They also offer low shipping prices for any EU country on top of their bulletproof packaging and speedy customer support. When you enter the code Colleen's Mongarex at checkout, you'll get free shipping on your first order of 40 euros. You can get series like Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom, plus many more at waltzcomicshop.com, your number one source for English language manga in Europe. Now let's get back to the video. Now, we've finally gotten to an artist who has never had their works published in English before. So the odds of getting Isla or Ella and the Distant King by BK are even slimmer than the rest. This ongoing fantasy supernatural shoujo series is currently running in Princess Magazine, where other titles like Requiem of the Rose King have been published too. Making those chances even slimmer, considering the fact that we hardly ever get series from Princess. I stumbled across Isla and the Distant King on Annie List, and it immediately piqued my interest. I just wanted to find some currently running shoujo fantasy series, so when I saw this one, I immediately checked it out, and to my surprise, there was a lot going on. You might think that the twist in this series is that vampires are in it, but while it was pretty obvious throughout the first few chapters that the people were vampires, the twist is actually not that. The real twist hits you right at the end of volume one, only a few pages before it's over, completely out of nowhere. The story starts off with Princess Isla, who is meant to marry the neighboring country's prince as a peace offering. A nasty rumor swirls around the country of Lotfelts, though. Apparently, any woman who has entered the country to be wed was never seen again. However, this doesn't stop Isla's parents from sending her off still. Luckily, Prince Erold of Lotfelts, who is Isla's husband-to-be, was a certified gentleman as soon as she got to the kingdom. The issue is just Prince Erold's brother, Douglas, who is suspicious from the get-go. Eventually, Isla finds out that he is a vampire and has been feasting on the blood of the maids that work in the castle. What's more is that Erold is also a vampire, but he has been suppressing his desires so as he doesn't turn Isla into a vampire as well, like his mother and father want him to. One of the big reasons that this manga stands out to me is because it feels a lot closer to 
olden day vampire lore. It's got a much more gothic Eastern European feel to it with the character's clothing and the setting in general. I've never been super into vampire lore myself though, so maybe I'm wrong on this. The vibes are just much more darker. They're much more grungier. They make it feel gothic. It feels like a vampire series, you know? A vampire series before the Vampire Night Twilight YAification of vampires. Not a bad thing by any means. I'm not shitting on that kind of vampire lore, but they just don't have that that gothic feel that I really am looking for when I want mythical creatures. Since I was only able to check out the first volume of this series, I can't say too much more because I don't want to give away the plot twist and I don't want to spoil more from the first volume. From that one volume alone, I knew I was sold though. Isla and the Distant King has everything you could want from a romanticy series, especially with that twist at the end, which gives me everything I want in a manga series as well. This the second to last series I want to talk about is another ongoing fantasy manga that comes from Princess Magazine called Matsurika Kanriden by Waka Takase, a manga adaptation of the court drama light novel by the same name. This one actually took me a bit by surprise because I don't often find myself enjoying court drama type series. What sealed the deal was really the fact that it wasn't about a maid or a courtesan or any character like that. It was actually about gathering knowledge and going to school, which really caught me off guard. Matsurika Kanriden takes place in a country called Hakuro, where the emperor is said to be able to turn into a divine beast. This emperor's palace is where Matsurika works as a lower rank official. That is until she is told to be a stand-in for a marriage interview and happens to meet the young emperor himself, Hakuyo. I'm gonna be real with you guys, I'm not sure if Hakuro the country and Hakuyo the name are the exact same, but it was the only thing I could find. The young emperor immediately takes interest in Matsurika as her reputation precedes her. Matsurika actually has a unique ability to remember everything she sees, even if it's only one time or just at a glance. Her perfect memorization serves her well as a lower rank official, but other than that, she doesn't feel like her talent deserves any praise. Hakuyo disagrees though, and wants Matsurika to take the imperial exam so she can be a high ranking official and work under him. He believes that Matsurika's memorization ability was granted from the heavens and needs to convince Matsurika to have confidence in her own abilities. My favorite thing about this manga is how it handles Matsurika's memorization abilities. Usually photographic memory is treated as something that makes you automatically smart, but this series and this character see it much differently. She may have the knowledge in her head, yet that doesn't equate to genius. There's a difference between just knowing something and actually practicing at it. This aspect of the series is the main focus, seeing her try to gain more confidence by bettering herself and honing the talent that she already has. It also just has the perfect amount of glittery and flowery shoujo atmosphere. I absolutely adore the artwork and paneling in this manga. Looking at the artist's previous works, you wouldn't expect them to nail that shoujo quality as well as they do, but it really just goes to show that the magazine a series is in will drastically change an author's way of drawing or their art style to fit the demographic of that magazine. <laughs> I think that Monserica Conridan would be a perfect series to publish in English right now with how court dramas are all the rage. You have Apothecary Diaries, you have Raven of the Inner Palace, you have Eccentric Doctor of the Moonflower Kingdom, and tons more. Monserica Conridan would really just be the icing on the royal affairs cake that has been served on a platter for the last few years. Last and certainly not least, we have those lesbians that I promised in the beginning of the video. This ongoing Jose manga currently being published in Kokohana Magazine is called Pinky Candy Kiss by Ami Uozumi. Following in the footsteps of other Yuri Jose like it, it also has 
complicated relationships and comfort like no other. Something about queer women not realizing they're into girls until later in life gets me every time. Maybe it's my own midlife self-actualization speaking. Pinky Candy Kiss follows the story of Takara, who was just dumped by her boyfriend, yet doesn't really feel one way or the other about it. She's never really felt much for any of her boyfriends for that matter, and feels that maybe she's just not destined to love anyone. That all changes though when Takara's friend from middle school, Ima, walks into her realtor's office. The two are absolutely ecstatic to meet each other once again, but trouble starts to arise when Takara starts to remember things about her past. She tried to kiss Ima once. Not only that, but she thinks she also may have had feelings for her. However, Ima has already gotten married, and the more the two hang out with each other, Takara's feelings start to arise again. From what I've read so far, Pinky Candy Kiss is absolutely precious. It does tackle a bit of the heavier parts of being queer, but where it's at right now, it's really just reveling in the sweetness of being reunited with your former crush. Takara and Ima gushing over each other and blushing at every reaction the other has just makes you want to squeal. Every moment between them is so cute. For all of the series I have mentioned, we once again have another manga with some beautiful, stunning artwork. When a modern setting Jose knows how to serve a look, it just makes me love it that much more. I don't want your Jose manga if you're not gonna give me fashion. The characters are just drawn so beautifully and paired with the shoujo bubbles, everything about the yearning just tugs at your heartstrings. Listen, we have a concerning lack of Jose manga in English. And we also have a concerning lack of Yuri manga in English. So why not license them both at the same time and give us Pinky Candy Kiss in English? A double whammy, if you will. Fusing the left behind communities of the girls, gays, and theys all together to become a super powered entity of manga loving losers. Hello, I am cutting in to inform you that I might actually just be Shoujo Jesus or something. Uh, I just got off of the live stream with my friends Riley and Will, and this licensed Pinky Candy Kiss. I haven't even put this video out yet. I, I literally just filmed this video the day before the Viz license. So I think I might be God. And as always with that, we have reached the end of today's video. I hope you guys were taking notes like I said and getting your fingers warmed up so you could write all of these down into the licensing surveys across the internet. The six manga that I mentioned here I think would have great appeal for the English speaking audience and maybe just selfishly I want them. They look really good and I just want to use these powers of manifestation while I still have them. The channel's already dying guys, I'm not pulling in numbers like I used to. I need to get ahead while I can. Real quick, I just want to give an update that I may only be putting out this video for this month. Lately I've just been in a writing slump which has put me majorly behind on my scripting and my idea process. I think if I give myself only one video this month I might be able to catch up and, you know, not force myself to push these videos out as soon as I possibly can. If anything changes though, be sure to check my community tab on YouTube or check my Patreon because I will be giving updates on either one of those. With that though, thank you as always my Hojos for watching. Welcome to any new Hojos. Read Shihayafuru. And I'll see you guys in the next video.